In this lecture, we are going to wrap up our mini series on the AI tech stack. And specifically, we're going to be looking at software. We are going to look at platforms and applications. And then we are going to look at the three features of AI software that have really led to it exploding over the last several years. Those three features are democratization, open source, and fine tuning. We did look at fine tuning in an earlier lecture. Here we're going to dive in a little bit more deeply. We're going to talk about when to fine tune and how to fine tune. Again, this is our illustration on the components of the AI tech stack, and we are now at software. Two terms that are really important for the AI GP exam are platform and application. So knowing what these are and what makes them different is crucial. A platform is the software that we use to plan, design, develop, and deploy or implement our artificial intelligence algorithm, etc. With regards to the AI development lifecycle, there are four stages, and we're going to cover this in detail in domain five. I just want to point out here that I'm using plan, design, develop, and deploy. The AIGP exam will refer to the final stage both as deploy and implement, and so I am more or less going to be using those synonymously. So just keep that in mind moving forward. With regards to the different functions that platforms have, they can assist with data analysis, streamlining algorithm development and workflows, collaboration, automating tasks, and monitoring the development or entire life cycle. Three major platform providers are AWS or Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. In application is how the AI system is used by the end user. And the end user can be someone that's using ChatGPT, for example, to help them write a haiku, for example. It could also be a business, someone that is leveraging an AI system to make their processes more efficient or to automate them. Now, there are two major ways that consumers and businesses are going to interact with the application. They're going to do that either through a REST API or through an application in which the AI is embedded, for example, a search engine. Google, for example, now has a search engine that will provide AI overviews. They've received a little bit of criticism as, as they've launched that feature, but the objective here is that you can ask a question and you will get an AI overview that is aggregating a number of different responses for you. So that would be an example of how the typical consumer interacting with the Google search engine may work with AI. A REST API, these are two different acronyms. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It's a way that individuals get information from a web server. And API stands for Application Programming Interface. In short, the two of these together enable one app or service to access resources in another app or resource. So a REST API is connecting two applications or services. Now, there are three major features that you need to know about when it comes to AI software. And these three features have really helped lead to the AI boom that we've witnessed in recent years. The first feature that you need to know about is democratization. And the democratization of AI software means that we now have software that is low code or no code software. Is this the best software? Uh, probably not. But low code means that there's a much lower barrier to entry, that more people can get involved with creating AI applications. In addition to being low code and no code, these platforms and applications have simpler user interfaces. And these two features together make AI easier to develop, deploy, and use. Having access to open source models and code is also another really important feature of AI software right now. Open source code and algorithms provide the building blocks for individuals and organizations without tremendous resources. If you think back to earlier in the domain, we saw that one graph from the 
Stanford Institute of Human-Centered Artificial Intelligence, or, or the Stanford High. The graph that I'm referring to is the one that showed how expensive training foundation models has become over the last six or seven years. The statistic at the very top there was Google's Gemini Ultra, which in 2023 cost almost $200 million to train. Not everyone has those types of resources, right? In fact, it's really only going to be big tech that can do that. So open source is a way for everyday folks and, and organizations without a lot of resources to be able to, to use and work with AI. Because we have more people that are able to access these open source resources, what's been created is what is referred to as a maker culture. This means that we have more people experimenting, more people innovating, and more people sharing the results of that experimentation and innovation. And what this has done in turn, it has created an enormous feedback loop. You have people that are experimenting and innovating that are sharing those results, people consuming those results, tweaking their own projects, doing more experimentation and innovating. And so we have this really fast moving feedback loop. More users, more experimentation, more ideas, more transformation, more development of best practices, of innovation, more generation of value, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Finally, fine tuning. As we saw in a recent lecture, this allows us to customize or specialize a foundation model. Again, the formula here, we have a foundation model, we fine tune it, and what we get is a model with a more specific or specialized application. When do we want to fine tune a model? Again, when we have a foundation model that we want to adapt to a new domain or to new data. Similarly, if we want to improve a task specific function or performance, or if we want to customize the output. How do we fine tune? Again, this is just a, a little bit more detail where we're building on what we've already talked about. Again, we're starting with a foundation model, one that is pre-trained. We are gathering task specific data. We're going to pass all of that data through the model. We're gonna collect the outputs, and then we're going to calculate the difference between the outputs that we have and what we want, what we expected. We will tweak the model parameters appropriately, and we will rinse and repeat until we get the desired result. You don't need to know this level of specificity for the AIGP exam. I just, again, I'm providing this as supplemental for those that want to understand a little bit more about how the fine tuning process happens. In this lecture, we have wrapped up our mini series on the AI tech stack. We started with platform and application. Remember that an AI platform is software that helps us to plan, design, develop, and deploy our artificial intelligence system. The application is how the AI system is used by the end user. So folks are interacting with the application as a means of accessing the AI system. Remember that there are three important features of AI software that have helped to create the recent boom in artificial intelligence. Those are democratization, open source, and fine tuning. Democratization includes low code, no code software, simpler user interfaces, and these together have made AI easier to develop, deploy, and use. Remember that open source models and code provide building blocks for individuals and organizations without tremendous resources. This has helped to create a maker culture and enormous feedback loop that has really sped up the pace of progress and, and innovation and so forth. Finally, we discussed fine tuning. Remember that this allows for customization. We start with a foundation model, and when we want to adapt that model to a new domain, new data, or we want to improve task-specific performance, we will introduce new data to that model to fine-tune it, and that gives us a special application. We fine-tune, again, by starting with a foundation model, something that is already pre-trained. We gather our task-specific data, we pass that data through the model, collect the outputs, calculate the difference between the outputs and our expected outputs. We tweak the model parameters so that it is moving in the direction we would like it to, and we rinse and repeat until we get our ideal results.